Amen. Stand still and see God move. That's what he told Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles chapter number 20. The enemy come against them. He had a, a large amount. He said a great army. Was coming against Israel, coming against Jehovah, Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat began to seek the Lord. He said he set himself to seek. He didn't set himself to battle. He said the Bible says he set himself to seek the Lord. And Jehovah, Jehoshaphat began to seek the Lord, but he said, the battle's not yours, but it's mine. Then he said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. But see, he didn't really, he didn't stop there. He said, Jehoshaphat, go ahead and start praising God. Go ahead and start singing unto God. He said, go ahead and praise God before God gives you the victory. A lot of times we don't give him praise till after the victory. But you know what? We need to go ahead and praise him before he gives the victory. What a difference it made. I appreciate Brother Tracy as his praying. And if you didn't catch it, I caught it. He was thanking the Lord for keeping him or us from things that we may not even know about. We don't know what God has kept us from today, but we ought to praise him for it. He's worthy. He's worthy. And stand still. I'd ask you tonight, take your Bibles, turn to the book of Psalms. Find Psalm chapter number 3. Psalm chapter number 3. And as you're turning there, let me ask you a question. Are there a time in your life that you've ever been disappointed by a friend? Maybe betrayed by a loved one. Maybe, maybe we, we, we've been hurt so bad and so deep that we think that we'll never be able to get out of it. But I thank God there's a but God moment. Yeah. There's a but God moment. And here, David was praying. David was going to, he's going to pray here and, and he's getting ready to flee. Well, he is fleeing. He's, he's fleeing Jerusalem for the second time. Not because of the Amorites, not because of the Moabites or the Egyptians, not because of some great army that's come against him. He's fleeing Jerusalem now because his own son has turned against him. His own flesh and blood, Absalom. And not only did Absalom uh, have turned and, and, and has taken the, the kingdom from David, not only that, but David, his own friend, some of those that were in, in his own company now has turned against David. David's in a mess. He is a, he, he, he's in the fix. And, the, and he, he, needed, he needed to, folks, have you ever had a time in your life when you just think you can't go on? Not another moment that you can't take another breath. We need some help. And David's going to give us, through the word of God here, how you and I can have victory when we don't see victory. You know, victory's there. And a lot of times God's going to move in our hearts. He's going to move in our lives. And it may not be in some great uh, fashion. It may not be with fireworks and lightning. It could be uh, just as he did with, with the light, in a still small voice. God can move on you and I. He's able to do that. He's able to do that. And here David is just simply, uh, he, he was fleeing again uh, Jerusalem from his son Absalom. And David began to pray. And, and, he, and he began to pray and he said, Lord. You know, that's a good way to start out. Yeah. To start out recognizing who he is. He is Lord. Yeah. Uh, we're not. He is. He's in charge. And folks, we need to realize, I need to realize, hey, I'm not, but God is. Yes. He's in charge. He said, Lord. Now that's capital L, capital L, capital O, capital R, and D. That's Jehovah. That's Jehovah God. He said, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? He said, many, many are they that rise up against me. He said, many there be which say 
he said, which say of my soul, notice what he says, there is no help for him in God. Say law. And David here, what's going on? David, he, he's, running, he's running for his life. He's running from his very own flesh and blood that's turned against him. Now David's in a fix. He's about to, he, he feels like he's about to be crushed. He feels like that, that there's no way the pressure, the pressure, you know what? Uh, I, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes the pressure may get to us just a little bit. Yeah. And David's feeling, have you ever felt the pressure? Absolutely. And David's feeling it now. He's feeling like his spirit's being crushed. It's being, uh, he's being torn apart. And again, it's not from some great enemy you might think about, the Amorites and all these ites that come against us. But it's from, folks, a lot of times our very worst enemy comes from within. They hurt the most. They'll leave the deepest wounds in our hearts. They'll leave the deepest wounds... Uh, it's our own family. It's our own friends that seems to hurt us. It, it's not some stranger, not somebody uh, from the outside. It, it, it's an inside job. And notice what David, he's just the very first thing David is telling you and I as children of God. When these things come, and by the way, if they're not coming against you, just wait a little while. Trouble will soon find you. Have you ever noticed that? We might be good one day, but hold on, trouble's coming. None of us, none of us is exempt from trouble. We all have it, but it's the way we go through it. Just let me put it this way, Brother Sammy. It's who we go through it with that makes the difference. I try to do it on my own. I'm, that's exactly where I'm going to be on my own. I'm going to be like, uh, feeling like David here being crushed. But David, he did, David knew where his help come from. I love what he said, my help cometh from the Lord. And David said, listen, he said, Lord, he said, what's going on here? He said, I, I've been forsaken by my family. I've been forsaken by my friends. But God, you've not forsaken me. He began to cry out to him. You know what, that would be a good uh, a good. A life lesson for us to learn right here. When things go wrong, what's the first thing you do? Well, you try to fix it. No, the first thing we ought to do is go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. That's not a last resort. That's not, that's not if everything else fails, then we'll pray. That's the first thing David did. That's the first thing we ought to do. What is he doing? He's beginning to lay everything out before the Lord. I love that song Heather sung this morning. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave him. That's what David's doing. He's taking those things upon his heart. He's taking those things that's hurt him so. And, and folks, what do we do? Uh, we, what do we do? Well, when somebody hurts us, what, we bottle it up. We begin to hold it and we begin just to stew on that and we begin to chew on that and it begins to do, it begins to ferment. And you know what happens when things begin to ferment? Sooner or later, it's going to swell up and something's going to bust loose. And by the way, that person that's hurt you, that said something on you, or maybe he said something to you, or done something to you, they don't have a clue. No. It's not your pain is not hurting them a bit. That's right. It's hurting you. And David began to lay everything out, his distresses, and that's the first thing we see. David, he's telling you and I, what we ought to do is lay these things out before God. Now, does God know? He knows. He knows already. Well, why do I need to say it? Well, one, we need to realize that we can't handle it. And when we, when we lay these things out, God can handle them. Now, again, he may not handle it like we think he ought to. I, I know nobody else has ever said, Lord, I just wish you'd just do something awful to this person. I know nobody's ever prayed like that. But I'm going to tell you. God, he said, vengeance is mine, say the Lord, I will repay. And he doesn't, it's not up to us what God does. It's up to him. And David said, Lord, he said, as many there be which say of my soul, he said, there's no help for him in God. What's David said? All my buddies, all my friends, all those who I thought was my friends now are saying this. Now look at you. 
You've been saying all these things that you were this and you were that. God has turned his back on you. Now, where's your God now, David? And David, he said, he, he, he said, all these are just saying, there's no hope for you, David. You've done too much. Aren't you glad? There's not, we can't do too much for God to pull you and I out of the ditch. God can take you and I. I'm so thankful that he's took an old boy like me and he's pulled me out of the ditch. He's pulled me out of those things. And God, he's done, and it's not Tim, but it's God who's done all those things. Amen. And David, his friends are saying, oh, hey, David, just look at you now. Uh, you, you must have done something awful for God to be doing this to you. You remember Shimei? Shimei, that's one of Saul's, one of his relatives. David, he was, he was fleeing Jerusalem. Shimei, he was up on a hill. He began chucking rocks at him. One of David's men said, let me go up there and cut his head off. I'll just go ahead and relieve him of his head. And David said, no. And I'm paraphrasing here. David, no. David said, no. Just leave him alone. And here's what Shimei said in 2 Samuel chapter number 16, verse number 8. He said, The Lord hath returned upon me all the blood of the house of Saul. He said, David, you're a bloody man. David, you're, you're a man of blood. That's why David couldn't build the temple. He was a man of blood. And Shimei said, Look at you, David. You're a man of war. Now you're getting what you deserve. He says, in whose stead thou hast reigned. He's talking about Saul. He said, And the Lord hath delivered the kingdom into, into the hand of Absalom thy son. Behold, thou art taken in thy mischief because, he said, thou art a bloody man. He said, David, you're getting what you deserve. You remember, you go back and you, you read the book of Job. Job had three really good friends. Eliphaz, you remember Eliphaz? Oh, Eliphaz, so far, and he had old Bildad. Three good friends. And all three of them friends said, David, or Job, uh, what did you do that God has brought this upon you? None of them said, David, let's pray. Or Job. None of them said, Job, we'll pray for you. We'll, we'll try to help you get out of this. And they said, Job, you must have done something. Awful. Even his wife, Job's wife even turned against, his own, against her own husband. She said, Job, curse God and die. Now, that's some good friends there, isn't it? I mean, I'd love to have that. Now, they'd be encouraging you, wouldn't they? That'd be an encouragement to you. Somebody tell you to curse God and die, and, and your buddies are Eliphaz or Bill Dad or Zophar, they're all telling you, you must have done something awful, Job. But the whole time, God was testing Job. He was just putting him to the test. And David, David, he said, here's what we need to do. He said, I, he said I'm going I'm to lay all these things out. I know my son. Now, did David ever, now, let me just go ahead and ask you this question. Did David ever lose his love for his son? Absolutely not. He loved Absalom. He, had, he loved, it broke his heart that he turned against him. David never stopped loving his son. You know, that's a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what you may say or what you may do that hurts him. He'll never stop loving you. And he'll never stop loving me. And David, he said, oh, here's what's going on. David said this in chapter uh, Psalm 55, verse 22. He said, cast thy burden upon the Lord. Well, that's good advice, isn't it? You know what we ought to do? We ought to give it to the Lord. Yeah. A lot of times we'll try to share our burdens with each other. And the only thing we can do is just listen and say, oh, I'm so sorry. And we'll try to help to the best of our ability. But I want to tell you, there's one who can reach down and he, they can, he can relieve you of that burden. And that's the Lord. The Lord, he said, cast thy burden upon the Lord. And notice what else he says. He said, and he shall sustain thee. You know, we try to do this on our own. But he said, God will sustain thee. Yeah. You know what he'll do? He'll comfort you. He'll give you strength. 
He'll help you in the way. And sometimes these rough, folks, sometimes it takes a long time. It, it might be months, it might be days, it, it could be years, but God is going to be with you every step of the way. Yes. Because He's faithful. And He's just. And He's righteous. He says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and He shall sustain thee. And He shall never, and I love this, He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Hallelujah. Yes. You know what he's saying right here? Be planted. Just go ahead and get rooted and grounded. Be planted by that, uh, by that river. Uh, get, uh, you know, uh, Brother Jimmy, I was thinking about that river you were singing about. Uh, I was thinking about that coming out of the throne there and how beautiful that river must be. I've seen the Valley River. It's not too pretty. I've seen the Hiawassee River. It's not too good neither. I've seen Notley River. It's not real great. But I can't wait to see that river coming out of the throne room of God, pure and crystal clear. Amen. I've seen the Jordan River. Seen all the fish that's in it. Seen Brother, uh, well, I don't think Scott got, I know I've seen Lisa get dunked underneath it. But it's nothing compared to that river that we're going to see one day. Hallelujah. Can you imagine? I, I mean, I wish that we, I could paint a picture as, as good as some could paint. And could you imagine just seeing that when we step in and seeing the beauty that's waiting for you and I? You see, that's what God has got in store. That's what God has got. David, David didn't put, David never put his trust in David. David put his trust in the Lord. Yes. David put his trust in the Lord. So he's saying here, he said, when you and I, when we get distressed and the enemy's coming in like a flood, when those things, when our own family seems to have turned against us, when our own friends seem to be saying, oh, look at you now, when they're pointing that finger at you and saying, where is God now? We need to lay those things out before God. Yeah. Give them to Him. And don't you notice verse 3. He said, but thou, O Lord, he said, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. And David said, you're my shield, you're my glory. And the lifter up of mine head, he said, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. Say, law. Aren't you glad that the Lord's ear that's not heavy that he can't hear? Aren't you glad that his hand is not, or his arm is not shortened, that he can't reach down and say, God, when, you, when a child, when one of his children cries out, don't you think that God is not listening this morning, this evening? He's listening. And David said, when I cried out to him, you see, I, David never said I, I cried out to my buddies. David never said I cried out to, to my generals. He said I never cried out to those that served me. David said, no, who am I crying out to? I'm crying out to the Lord, the one who can make the difference in my life. Can I say God can make a difference in your life as well? Whatever situation you might be in today, it doesn't matter the situation. God knows where we are. You know, you can't hide from him. Have you ever done this as a child? Try to get under the covers so that nobody will see you? Yeah. God still sees you. God still sees you. You see, you can't hide those things from him. God knows. He knows our heart. He knows where we are with him. He knows where we, where we are in relationship, in our relationship with him. And David just simply said here, he said, oh, here's what I need to do. I need to proclaim, proclaim my faith. Oh, you know what we need to do? We need to share our faith one with another. We need to share our faith with the lost and dying world. They need to hear. And we need to hear. You know what we need to do? When we share our faith and we share what God has done for you and I, it will help, each, it will help all of us to grow more confident in God. You know, don't be confident in me. I'll fail you. Our confidence needs to be in the Lord. He Amen. said, proclaim your faith. And so no, notice what he did here. He said, I cried in the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. Say, law, I laid me down. <laughs> David said, oh, wouldn't I'd love to do this. I'd love to be able to do this at night. I'll be honest with you. I have trouble sleeping sometimes. 
But David said, I laid me down and slept. Hallelujah. Wasn't good sleep. Wouldn't it be? I, I was looking at Heather and, and Tracy's little granddaughter today. She was just sleeping. My goodness. And I was so jealous. I was, I wish I could sleep like that again. You know why she could sleep like that? She didn't have a care. She didn't have a worry. And you know what? We can sleep like that. And when we lay our burdens down, when we put our distresses upon, when we give those things to the Lord, and when we begin to proclaim our faith in Him, God will help you. And I, David said, I laid me down and slept. He said, and I awakened. He said, for the Lord sustained me. Oh, folks, this is not a children's prayer. I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. You know, I know that's a children's prayer, but there's a lot of truth in that. We can't keep ourselves. If we could, we'd lose ourselves. Anybody here lost your car keys today? they hard to find sometimes. But God never loses you. He'll never misplace you. He doesn't have to say, where did I leave him? Sometimes we leave him. And I'm going to tell you where he is. He's in the last place where you left him. Yes. And he's waiting on you to come back. That's where he's, he's just waiting on you to come back. And David said, I was able to lay down and I was able to sleep. He said, here's what I'm doing. He said, I will not be afraid of, I want you to notice what David said here. I won't be afraid of 10,000s of people that have set themselves round. He said, set themselves against me round about. He said, I don't care if the enemy's got 10,000. They got me surrounded and the, and the odds are 10,000 to one. He said, but they don't see who I see. They don't see the Lord God. He said, but God makes a difference in their lives. Kind of like, I believe it was Elisha. He's coming off the mountain. The enemy had him surrounded. The old servant began to see that, see all the enemies. God, what are we going to do? We're in a mess. We're going to get killed here. And the old prophet of God said, open his eyes. Open his eyes. And he began to look and he began to see all the other army up on the hills with flaming chariots and horses. And he said, oh, wait a minute, there's more for them than there are against us. Can I say, I don't care if it is 10,001, there's more for you than against you. Why? Because there's that one called the Lord. The Lord Jehovah, he said, I'll be with you. No matter. And, God, and David said, hey, I just need to proclaim my faith. When David, what happened here? It's the same thing, the same principle with you and I. When we take our eyes off our problems and put our eyes upon God, our problems begin to get a lot smaller and God begins to get a lot bigger. Amen. But you got to do something. You got to get your eyes off the enemy. And you know, sometimes the enemy's self Sometimes our worst enemy is that one that looks at us in the mirror. Yeah. I was teasing Adam before, before we started service, and, and, and he had his tie bar on. It, it looked straight like he put a level on there. I said, Adam, I'm going to put a level on that check, see just how square you are. <laughs> and Adam said, I looked in the mirror, and I told him a mirror doesn't lie. A mirror will tell you the truth. A mirror, you see, sometimes that enemy, it looks us straight back in the eye from the mirror. And God can deliver, you know, God can deliver you from your own self. Hey, he has me. And I'm sure he has you. And David is just simply praising God. He's proclaiming his faith. And why? Well, notice he said, you're my shield. He said, you're, you're the one. He said, but thou, Lord, are a shield for me and my glory, the lifter up of mine head. David said, hey, you know what you are? You're my protector. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that he's for me and not against me. Hallelujah. And David said, are you, you're the lifter of my head. You know what David said? 
He said, the enemy has, has burdened me so. The enemy, my friends, has got me in such a way. He said, my, all I'm doing, I got my head bowed down. He said, I'm bent over. He said, I'm in a terrible shape. But God come in and he began to encourage David and David began to lift his head. Hallelujah. You know, if he'll do that for David, he'll lift your head as well. He'll lift you up. No matter, folks, we can be in a pit of despair. We can be in a terrible way. But God can come in and he can lift us up out of that. You know why? He's able. He said he's, your, he's your, our protector. And then not only that, he said, you're my source of joy. He said, you're my source of joy. He said, you lift my head up, you encourage me. You know, what he's saying here is David, when he's talking about his head being down, David was running from Absalom. He was running for his life in shame. But God brought him back in glory. He said, that's what God will do. That's what he'll do for his children. That's what he done for David. He said, he sustained me. He watched over me. And well, how much did he watch over? Day and night. Those that's been in the military, if you've ever pulled guard duty, thank God you don't have to do it all night long. It's only for a couple of hours. But God is able to do it every moment watching you and me. We can't. I can't. You can't. But God can. He said he sustained me. He watched over me. He said he brought me up. And he said he delivered me from fear. He said, I cried unto the Lord, and the Lord, he said, with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. Then he said, I laid me down and slept. David didn't have a worry. He didn't have, he, you know, David didn't fear the enemy. He, he didn't fear, not because of David knew that he was a man of war. Not because of David was a great warrior. David didn't fear the enemy because of a great God. Because he had God on his side. He faced an enemy that's nine foot eight inches tall. He brought a rock to a sword fight, Brother Jimmy. He did. He said, Goliath, he said, oh boy, you're a big man. Could you imagine getting ready to fight somebody, Brother David, nine foot eight inches tall? That's a big man. He said, you brought a sword? You brought a spear? And you brought a shield against me. He said, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, you don't know, old Goliath. He said, I've got the first guided missile in my bag here. I've got the first mark missile that knows where to go. Hey, don't, don't think these are just new weapons. David had one. He had five of them in his bag. Five is the number of grace. David needed grace, and he picked out the one, and it shot him and got him right between the eyes. See, David knew who his defender was. Amen. He knew. He didn't have to fear. He said, notice what he said. He said, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people when that have set themselves around, he said, against me round about. What, what's David? David trusted the Lord to hit save him. No matter the situation, no matter the odds, no matter the battle, David knew God would deliver him. Now that's confidence in him. But hallelujah, I've got good news tonight. We can have that very same confidence. You know why? We've got the very same God that David had. We can have the same confidence. We can, be, we can have that same relationship. We, and hallelujah, we can face today and some of these days that we faced have been pretty scary. I'll be honest with you, hadn't it? Some days are worse. And some days, I just kind of like wish we could stay in the bed. But you got to get up. You got to wash your face. Get prepared for the day. And don't have to be afraid. Why? Because God is with you and I. Then I want you to notice, thirdly, David said, Arise, O Lord. He said, save. He said, oh my God. He said, arise, O Lord, save me. Oh my God, for thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheek. He said, upon the cheekbone, and thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Wow. 
Now, when God goes in and does work, he does work, doesn't he? So what's he doing here? Now, David is just simply crying out for God's deliverance. So David, just, just like you and I, one, he, he's laying things out. He's laying the burdens out. He's laying those things out, his distresses, his problems before the Lord. Then David said, I'm going to proclaim my faith in God. Now, David here, he said, I'm going to cry out. Thirdly, he said, I'm going to cry out to God. Now, this cry here is not a cry, he said, but it's a cry of confidence in God. It's not oh me. It's not oh look where I'm at. But God, I know that you're able to deliver me. It's a confidence. And folks, I want to tell you something. We can have confidence in God. Yes. David had it. We can have it. We've got the same Lord. We've got, he's, he's not lost. You know, he's not lost not one bit of power. And I want to tell you something else. He's not lost not one. Not one. Of his children, by the way. He's not lost a one. He said, the father which gave them me, he said, he's put them in his hands. And he's not lost, not one. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't think, don't think that you're that one that God can lose because you're not. You're not. If you're a child of God, you're in God's hands. And he said, he said, he won't lose it. So David here, he's crying out. Notice what he said here in verse number 7 again. Arise, O Lord, save me. O my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone, and thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. But what? And I'm going to tell you, that, I mean, that's pretty gruesome, isn't it? God will break the teeth out. He said, now I want you to notice what he says in verse number 8. He said, salvation... Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessings is upon thy people, say law. And again, that say law, we just need to pause. We need to think about that. You know, folks, if we could really get a hold of some things, if we could get a really hold of some things that they sung about, how what God has done for you and I, if we could get a hold of what God went through for you and I, I believe we'd be a totally different person, a totally different people. And David said, I've got confidence in the very one who can deliver me. David, now David just simply said, hey, God's able to deliver. And I'm going to tell you this something tonight. Whatever situation you may find yourself in tonight, God knows. See, we can hide it from each other. We can act like nothing's wrong. But God knows. And I want to tell you, God can deliver you. You don't have, you see, you don't really need to worry about us. We need to worry about God and what God thinks, what God knows. And David said, oh, here's what I'm going to do. He said, I'm going to cry out. And he said, that what? For what? He said, that, that not only a personal deliverance here, he said, but I'm going to see a defeat of my enemy. You know what? We said, well, we're, we're going to get an enemy, get, get even. But we don't, we don't really need to worry about getting even. We just need to let God get even for us. Amen. And David said, I'm not going to try to do that. I'm just going to sit back and watch God. I'm going to sit back and watch him. And what? And what? He said, well, he said, what's going on? Those that, that has uh, jeered on him, those that has mocked him, those that's made fun of him. David said, well, you'll get yours. I may not do a thing. That's what he said about old Shimei. He said, nah, don't worry about it. God will take care of Don't worry about it. And folks, if we was to take, that's a good attitude to have. Well, we ought not to worry about some things, what people said to us or said about us. We just need to let God handle those things and move on for the glory of God. Amen. And David just simply said, oh, how did he get his victory? How did David get this victory that we've been talking about so much tonight? Well, he took his burdens to the Lord. And he left him there. The problem sometimes is Tim will bring his burdens and then he'll want to pick them right back up. I want to put them right back on my back and carry them right back out when I need to leave them right here. He said, David left his burden. David left those things, his distresses, all these things, and he turned to the Lord for help. You know what David did then? David was praying. Prayer. What a privilege prayer is for a child of God. 
to be able to speak to the very one who made you. Talk to him. Prayer is not just something for the preachers or the deacons or, or the Sundays. Prayer is for each and every one of us. Brother Scott mentioned that this morning. We, we all can't do. I mean, there's gifts that people have. Everybody's got, got a different gift, but everybody can pray. We can all pray. And when do you pray? Now. Now. And he's saying here, how long should we pray? You know, when we've got these problems, when we've got these things going on, how long should we pray for? A week? Two weeks? Brother David, Brother David hit it on the head. Sometimes we'll pray for somebody, then, then they slip our mind, and we don't pray anymore. But what, how long should we pray? We need to pray till we get an answer. Yes. We need to pray till God answers. Now, his answer may not be what we think. His answer may not be what we want. But we need to pray till God answers our prayers. We need to pray until God, he either answers, answers our prayers or he gives us peace about the whole situation. And that's the answer of prayer, by the way. That's what he said in Philippians 4, uh, and verses 6 through 7. He said, be careful for nothing, but in everything. Now, I like that. He doesn't leave anything out. He said, but everything in prayer. And supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. He said, "In the peace of God, which passeth all understanding." Hallelujah! I've got good news for you. We may not understand it, but we don't have to. But God can step in. Amen. Hallelujah! Well, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask God why. No, you're not. You know why? You're not going to have this same old junky mind anyway. And thank God we won't have this same old body that we've abused. It'll be new. And our mind will be like his. So don't, don't, don't worry about asking why. Don't worry about understanding. You don't have to. God already knows. God already knows. And he says... And let your request be known to God and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You see, it's the peace of God that ought to rule in our hearts. It ought to rule in our minds. Do not let our minds try to rule. If you ever let your own mind try to rule, you'll be in a mess. I know mine, it gets me in a mess. I get twisted up sometimes. But God... Aren't you glad he can calm your mind? Hallelujah. And he says, that, he said this in Colossians 3.15, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which you're also called, he said, into one body. He said, and be, now, now this is a good one for us, and be you thankful. Thankful. Again, I appreciate Brother Tracy's prayer. Thanking God for keeping us from something we didn't even know was coming our way. That's pretty good. Well, folks, we ought to do that. We ought to give him praise and glory. He says, and be you thankful when God gives us his peace. When God gives you and I peace, you know what we can do? We can proceed with confidence. Not in ourselves. Not in our abilities. Not in nothing that we can do. But we can have confidence in the word of God and in God that he'll help us no matter what may come our way. God is able to help you. I, I was thinking as we were singing this morning, Amazing Grace, I, I was thinking about David and I was thinking about this message this morning. When, when we were singing about Amazing Grace, I, I can't imagine as David was pinning this down and he was running from Absalom and he was uh, fearful for his life. He began, I believe David was thinking about that Amazing Grace of God. He said, through many trials, through many toils, he said. He said, uh, I've already come. He, he talked about toils and snares in that song, don't he? He said, I've already come. Tis grace that brought me safe thus far. And grace will lead me home. I like that song by Chris Tomlin when he sings Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Hallelujah. I like that song. Well, preacher, what do you mean? I like that song. I'll just be honest with you. And it talks about amazing grace. My chains are gone. I've been set free. 
David, he's, what was he wanting? He's wanting the same thing that you and I want. He wants to be set free of these distresses and problems. And God can. He said, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. You know what? He'll do it for you. He'll do it for you. I like the verse in that song. says, the Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be. As long, now this is good here. I try to hold on. As long as life endures. Now can I ask you a question? How long is life going to endure in Christ Jesus? It's forever. It's forever. And he said he'll be your shield and portion be as long as life endures. That's what God will do for you and I. As a child of God, when those things are coming against us, when, when we're getting in such a mess and we feel like we're being crushed, God can come in if we'll let him. Would you stand? And he said, just lay your distresses before the Lord. Proclaim your faith in the Lord. He said, just cry out to God. Go ahead and thank Him for the victory. Go ahead and just give Him praise for the victory. Go ahead and sing, sing, uh, uh, pray songs for the victory. It may have not come yet, but God said, go ahead and do it before the victory. He said, because the battle's not yours, it's mine. He said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Yeah. And as they sing, but ask